Cincinnati is a seven-point favorite against uh, Jacksonville. Are we uh, chasing this one here or uh, fading it, Jeff? Chasing it, man. This is, this line is too low. Uh, I, the Cincinnati Bengals have compiled themselves a very, very solid defense this year, and not many people are talking about it. It's a team who's top 10 in sacks. They're top 10 in terms of rush yards allowed against. They're stopping the run. They're, they're not allowing big plays downfield. And also... They gave Joe Burrow time in the pocket last week against Pittsburgh. Their O-line didn't let him get sacked once or hit once. And guess what? Joe Burrow was elite. He completed over 75% of his passes. Now he comes against Jacksonville, a team who's averaging 1.5 sacks per game. Oh, boy. This one's going to get ugly, Emerson. I'm sorry to hear you. I'm here. I'm sorry to say this to you, buddy, on on a Tuesday morning. But, uh, no, Cincinnati's a good team. They're at home here, and and I don't think they're getting – Enough credit. This line should be bigger. Jacksonville. Fuck. Yeah, I know, man. And uh, Kenny, Cincinnati, six and two ATS in their last eight home games as well. Yeah, I look. Here's the thing with this game. I don't want to endear myself to Emerson. This is not why I'm saying this. I actually do think the Jaguars can cover here. Mm. They're getting a few key members back. Trey Herndon has practiced today. They have a couple of members of the offensive and defensive line returning to practice. And I think that this team, if they get a little healthier, and you look at this this line movement, it was, is wild. Um, I think that seven points may be the limit here where I'd consider actually taking the Jacksonville Jaguars. I think that like any young player in another sport or young team, you know, the Bengals are going to have a lot of losses that don't make sense, right? They're going to have a lot of triumphant uh, moments, but they also did lose to the Bears, and they might lose this game to the Jaguars in prime time. I think that the Jaguars can cover this game. I think that we haven't seen the best of Trevor Lawrence yet, and this team is running the ball very well. I know that the Cincinnati Bengals defense is legit. I am a believer in the Bengals, but I, I think that stranger things have happened, and I think that the Jacksonville Jaguars can play a little better than this. And if they get a little healthier, I think that things could really go well for them defending against Joe Burrow. Okay, you've got uh, Dallas. Let's see, it's now on the DK Sportsbook. Four and a half point favorites at home against Carolina. Kenny, you chasing this spread? Absolutely. This is really dumb. Look, everyone wants to. It's a really consensus opinion that the Carolina Panthers are the most fraudulent three and O team in the league, and I actually think that the the Broncos really give them a strong run for their money as well, which we'll talk about. But look, I mean, here, here's the thing: the Panthers haven't really played anybody. This defense is the is the thing that I, is really going to put to the test here. Uh, because the Dallas Cowboys last night looked incredible. Uh, they have looked incredible all season long against good defenses. You know, they almost beat the Buccaneers. Uh, they, they did a very, very good job. So I, I think that when you take a look at this Dallas defense as well, Micah Parsons has been a big, big stopper. And Chuba Hubbard has not looked good. He did not look good in relief of Christian McCaffrey. I think that this is a, a bad matchup here for the Carolina Panthers. We thought we saw how bad this offense was without Christian McCaffrey last week, struggling to score on the Texans. The defense made Davis Mills, the neck man, look like uh, really, really good, like he was ahead above the clouds. So I think that there is a little bit of a secret sauce here for the Cowboys to maybe run the ball at this at this defense, uh, you know, which which didn't look that great last week. And then I think that this defense is not, not given enough credit for how good it's been this year. And I think that they can slow down the Carolina Panthers and, and win this game pretty easily. All right, Jeff, we're talking about two teams here that are undefeated against the spread this season. So which one or which side do you fall on? Yeah, no, look, at, at four and a half, I, I think I'm pretty much in agreement with Kenny. Um, this this could be the spot where the Panthers, you know, the, the glass slipper breaks or whatever analogy you want to use. Um, the Cowboys at home just look better uh, last week. Probably maybe their best defensive game in like five years. They got Trey Diggs out there looking like a, a real game changer on defense as well. He's going to probably put a, a, a plug in, in a guy like DJ Moore. And then you've got, you know, wh- where does Sam Darnold go after that? He hasn't been able to connect with Robbie Anderson, no McCaffrey. Um, this is this sets up as a trouble spot. Now, if this if this line got to like six or seven, I don't really want to trust Mike McCarthy to like game manage, you know, a, a spread that big. But at four and a half, I'm going to side with the Cowboys too. Zeke Elliott, you know, uh, running the ball really well. They got uh, Pollard. Yeah, the, the, this Cowboys team not getting enough credit yet. Let's go to two undefeated teams right now in the NFL. The Rams just knocked off Tom Brady and the Bucks at home, and now L.A. will be laying five and a half at home against Arizona, 3-0 and as well. Uh, Jeff, you chasing or fading the Rams being five and a half point favorites at home? 
So, I mean, as if you watched the the show yesterday, you know, I'm a big believer in what the Rams are doing. It's legit. You know, this this Matthew Stafford thing is just setting career highs everywhere. But this line is too big. Um, let's give Arizona a little bit of credit as well. This this and it's not just the Kyler thing. It's I, we all know Kyler is playing well and and, you know, he, he could definitely just keep this close by himself if he has a monster day. But, you know, this defense is playing good, too. They're, they're up there in sacks per game. Um, their secondary is playing pretty well, too. They're really limiting opponents, um, you know, just yards per attempt as, as well. So this is going to be a tougher game for Matthew Stafford. And, and, you know, if they can put a plug in Cooper Cup, where where else is he going to go? I mean, Robert Woods hasn't shown up yet. So I really like the Arizona, the Cardinals here. I, I'd love to see this line get up closer to seven. But even at five and a half, I'm not taking the Rams to cover here. Arizona is legit. Um, and uh, again, you know, I, I think most people are just kind of diving into the Rams head first after they, they beat Brady. But if you can get this at six, I really like it for Arizona. Yeah, Kenny, despite being 3-0 and and 2-1 and against the spread, the Cardinals have had some nail biters throughout the portions of the season. Yeah, we thought they were going to lose to your Jaguars last week. Yeah. It was uh, would have been pretty stunning. But here, here, here's what I will say about the Los Angeles Rams. We have talked about this defense for years, right, under Sean McVay. We've talked about how good – and Wade Phillips. We've talked about how great it looked. And this is not a defense that looks very good right now. I'll take you back to week one when Andy Dalton had success against that Rams defense. I know that that was a 20-point win for the Rams. But I'm telling you, as someone who laid all those points with the Rams, it did never felt comfortable. Dalton had a lot of success through the air. And then you look at the last two weeks, the Colts put 24 on them with Carson Wentz. And the Buccaneers, Tom Brady went over 430 yards against this secondary last week. I don't, I am not really trusting this secondary of the Rams. I think this, this offense looks great. I was on Matt Stafford MVP before the year. I feel great about that. I feel great about the Rams winning the Super Bowl. But these are not going to be like classic Rams games when you get, you know, Jared Goff just getting a couple touchdowns and that's how they win it because of their great defense. Like this, these are going to be shootouts. So I think that this is a line that's a little, if, if it were like one and a half points, two points, I'd be really excited about it. But I have to take the Cardinals here. Jeff mentioned that J.J. Watts made a big impact on this team. And they also are sixth in weighted defensive DVOA as a whole unit. So I think that this is uh, potentially a pretty close game. I think Arizona could actually pull the upset here. I think that this Rams secondary is something we are not talking enough about. Now to the game we have all been waiting for. The return of the prodigal son. It's Tom Brady versus Bill Belichick. Tampa Bay is a seven point now, seven point road favorite in New England in his return to Foxborough, Massachusetts. Kenny, are you chasing or fading that Tampa Bay can cover the touchdown? Yeah, I, I'm absolutely chasing this. Look, I, I think that we have to really take a good look at ourselves here if we're really thinking about taking the New England Patriots. They have a rookie quarterback. They have a rushing attack that, I mean, I was really excited about Damian Harris first two weeks of the season. What happened last week? They decided to go to Brandon Bolden, uh, J.J. Taylor. Anytime Brandon Bolden is getting involved in the game plan, you know you're, Bill Belichick's really desperate because he's like, oh, i got to take this guy who's been on my team since the 90s and really start giving him the ball. Uh, this is a team that's just out of answers on offense when Mac Jones can't save them. And last week he certainly couldn't. And, you know, again, you start to see him reach down into his bag. Kendrick Ford was getting targets. John o. Smith dropping passes left and right. It was an ugly performance. And if you think the Saints defense is tough to go against, you have a whole other thing coming against the Buccaneers, a team that, yes, they did lose last week to a high-powered Rams offense, but this is still a team that's returned most of its uh, most of its key players from last year where they shut down Patrick Mahomes in the Super Bowl. Um, I think the pass rush is really going to get to Mac Jones. You saw Cameron Jordan wreak havoc on him last week. I think it's going to be a whole lot more difficult. They're going to throw some ridiculous blitz schemes at him, top bowls, and I think – that this is going to be a nightmare for Mac Jones. The Patriot or the uh, Buccaneers should run rough shot on the Patriots. Jeff, the most highly anticipated regular season game in New England sports history. Oh man, <laughs> uh, this this line getting to seven. I just I want to take the Patriots side so bad. It, it's the respect that you have for Bill Belichick, mm -hmm. but I think Kenny pretty much laid out my feelings as well. Um, you know, no James White for the Patriots now. Damian Harris struggling in, in pass protection. Antonio Brown going to be back for the Buccaneers. And I think that is a very, very key thing. Um, you know, this, this Patriots secondary is really good. But with Antonio Brown out there, it, it's just mismatches everywhere. You can, you can move him around, you know, the, the, the formation. Gronk is going to be out, uh, out there as well. 
I think it's just going to be too much. I could see the Patriots maybe making this a close game at halftime, but I think ultimately the Buccaneers passing offense wins out and uh, probably that D line for the Bucs eventually gets to Mac Jones. So even at minus seven, I'm going to say, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll side with the Bucs. I, I think you got to wait for this one, maybe even to get over a touchdown here before you start th thinking about taking the Patriots.